see this um, depending on the type of computer organization our instructions will vary for example a computer might be designed so in a simple way in such a way that it will not have any registers at all other than the most basic registers required why do you do that because we want to keep the cost of the cpu as minimal as possible so if you are looking at such type of uh, computers where we don't have a lot of registers then what we are supposed to use is we'll use one register and along with that we'll use the other other operand from the memory for example you know i'm talking about the basic the simplest type of computer which we'll see later we'll see even its design also but for now just see the required parts here let us say this is the arithmetic and logic unit now what will arithmetic and logic unit do it will perform some operation like addition or anything and then it will store the result and for storing the result let us say most of the computers they will have a register special purpose register called as accumulator let's denote it with ac accumulator why is it called accumulator because it is supposed to accumulate the result right and now this can even be given as input to this alu right and there will be a bus data bus to which memory will be connected okay now memory is connected to this data bus and assume that alu is also connected to this data bus it is the simplest type of architecture where we don't have a lot of registers we have only few registers and maybe some other registers which will be present are going to be program counter this program counter is nothing but uh, it will say what is the next instruction that has to be fetched from the memory and maybe instruction register which will get the instruction and save it here so that it can be interpreted and control signals will be given now in this type of architecture or in this type of organization so it is called as single accumulator organization which means we don't have a lot of registers we have only one specific register like accumulator in this what happens is we will not be using lot of register names in the instruction so in the instruction if you see they will be like this so one will be what is the mode the addressing mode i'll discuss it shortly and the other one is what is the op code and the other one is what is the operand that's it that's it only these three so and this operand is going to be a single operand so in this one we are especially going to use single instru single address instructions right so single address instructions we are going to use all single address instructions which means in all these instructions we will we'll have either one inst one address or zero address so why zero address maybe if we have uh, sometimes some instructions like increment accumulator for that there is no uh, uh, operand required at all the operand is already implied in the definition of the instruction isn't it if i say increment inc accumulator a let us say this is an instruction in a computer what does it mean you have to go to the operand which is nothing but the ac and increment it now there is no need of specifying what is the operand separately it is already included in the definition of the instruction that is why it is called as implied 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 means it is already present inside in that case no addresses are required therefore in single accumulator organization either we will have single address instructions or no no addresses also so what is the what is the um, example of a single address instruction is maybe you might write something like this add x that's it generally what is that we are supposed to have we are supposed to have two numbers to add isn't it but i'm just giving only one operand what does it mean the other operand is already present in the accumulator the meaning of this particular instruction is you take x so what is x is it directly an operand or is it something present in the memory that we don't know we'll we'll discuss about it later when we discuss about the addressing modes for now just assume that x is the address in the memory in which the operand is present 
then what will be the operand the operand is nothing but whatever is present in the memory at address x when i write like this assume that it is nothing but the operand which is present at address x in the memory m is the memory and x is the address in the memory and m of x means it is the operand which is present in the memory at address x now we have to get this and then we have to add it with whatever is already present in accumulator what does it mean it means that earlier before you perform this something has to be present in the accumulator therefore the previous instruction will either produce something in the accumulator or it will load accumulator with some operand for example the previous instruction might be load y which means you are loading the accumulator with something which is present in the uh, address y got it and now whatever is present in the accumulator we are adding it with the memory now what will be the destination the destination is going to be ac itself see normally in every instruction we are supposed to provide three things what are they one is what is the destination right and what is the operand one and what is the operand two right and this is the operation so this is what has to be provided by every instruction when we have two operands then what is the destination we should provide this but in case of this uh, single accumulator organization what is happening is already one operand is going to be loaded by the earlier instruction therefore that instruction will be single address instruction loading is nothing but a single address instruction isn't it just load this operand that is a single address instruction after that is loaded then we are going to use this one so for this one we are going to combine this add and this both of them now for the destination we are going to use accumulator itself that is why we need not pro, you know provide three instructions three addresses we, we could just provide one address so you might also ask me what are we trying to achieve here why are we trying to reduce the number of addresses in the instruction the reason is simple if you try to reduce the number of addresses present in an instruction we effectively can reduce the size of the instruction once we reduce the size of the instruction the space required to move the instruction as well as store it is also going to be reduced therefore we can simplify many things including the cost of the computer that is the only reason right if in case if you try to put lot of uh, operands here you can easily write a program the program will be simplified but then the hardware cost will increase right that is why we are trying to reduce it got it so what i mean to say is in case if you have simple register organization like accumulator then we need at most one address in the instructions example like this got it i hope you understood this right so now next one is general register organization in this one what happens is we'll have an alu arithmetic logic unit and along with alu we'll have lot of general purpose registers like r1 r2 r3 like this right we'll have lot of general purpose registers r4 like this then what happens is when we have these many uh, registers then we can easily uh, uh, go with a uh, lot of these registers in one instruction for example you can write an instruction like this add r1 r2 r3 maybe the meaning of this instruction could be it could be interpreted like this you add r1 and r2 and you place the result in r3 you could interpret the instruction like this getting this you add these two and you place the result in r3 so you can directly assume it like this now what is the advantage of this advantage of this one is the size required or the number of instructions that are required to write a program are going to be very less in case if you can replace these two instructions with the operands see now let us say the operand operand 1 is present in memory and operand 2 is present in memory then in this uh, single uh, single in, uh, this uh, register what you are supposed to do is we have to load one operand first 
and then add it to the second operand that is why we require maybe two or three instructions here right because we had even store the address you know the result back but in this case we need not have those many instructions in just one instruction it can be done but what is the disadvantage you are supposed to have these many registers first of all and also your instruction size is going to be big and therefore your instruction register size has to be big and when you are fetching the instruction the bus size has to be big got it so but what is the advantage even if you are putting that much money if you are you know if it is going to be costly it is going to be fast as well got it so anyway that all depends on what is the type of computer you are designing most of the general purpose computers they follow this general register organization which means they are going to have lot of registers right and some people they are even trying to cut short this which means instead of having these three registers they are trying to store the result in the same register one of the registers which is providing the operand and they are just cutting it short and they are writing add or one or two so this way we'll have uh, the flexibility of smaller register size but two addresses therefore in the general purpose organization or in the general register organization we can have two address registers two address instructions or three address instructions both are possible right and now what about these numbers given does they are they actually the registers or is one of them going to be a memory address and other one is going to be register or or both of them going to be memory addresses that depend on the modes we shall discuss about it later got it so whatever it is along with the op code we have the option of specifying two operands those two operands can be directly given as the address or the register or the value or indirectly they can be given all right and in this case three addresses are provided and the other one is stack organization in the stack organization we have zero address instructions possible in this case we have zero address instructions possible except for push and pop so we know what a stack is we have already seen what a stack is in uh, data structures right the same stack which is seen in data structures can be seen here so how do we build a stack here is either in the memory or in the registers let us say we have a lot of registers like this then we can think of all these registers as a single stack and then we can have a pointer which points to the top of the stack then what we do is in order to perform any addition then we push both the operands first we first push let us say this is the top of this assume that top of this stack is here right here now we push x one of the operand for addition and then we push y the second operand for addition and in the third operation we will not provide any operands at all we directly provide the op code which means we say add so when we say push x and then push y and then add so what will this add do is it will take these two instructions these two operands from the top of the stack add them and then store the result in the top therefore top will contain x plus y therefore here if you observe it no in, no operands are provided which means zero address instructions other than this push and pop this push and pop are the two instructions which are required to get the you know operands onto the stack and once we get the operands on the onto the stack we need not provide any op code operands directly we can say the op code which is add so zero address instructions are possible in the stack organization so this is one type of organization therefore depending on whatever uh, organization is we are going to vary the number of operands present in the instruction and depending on the number of operands present in the instruction the size of the instructions are going to vary if you have the combination of all this then it is going it is normally called as a complex instruction set if you have any one of them and if you are going to have a fixed format then it is called as uh, you know rifc right we shall see them see about them later not now but for now understand that the number of uh, operands in a instruction depend on the type of the organization and then what does each operand specify that depend on the mode so what is the mode uh, i'll see for example here let us say there is it is given as add x we know that x is an operand and it is a single operand now 
does x represent a number directly or is it an is it a resistor number in which the operand is present or is it a resistor in which the address is present where the operand is present or is this the address in which the operand is present so how to interpret this number this one how to interpret this that is given by the addressing mode got it so if you look at the binary form of this instruction you can see that the binary form of the instruction which contains ones and zeros can be divided into various form various uh, you know uh, parts one part is called as mode other part is called as opcode and the other part is called as operand it is clear that it is having only one operand right single address, single oper single address instruction and then it is clear that it is add and now depending on this mode we know how to interpret this address given got it now there are various addressing modes we shall see all of them now okay hi if you are planning to do masters then doing masters abroad is better than doing masters in india i'll give you all the reasons so first reason is out of 1 lakh students who take gate every year there are only 500 seats in old iits so all the iits put together have a acceptance rate of 0.5% and iits universities better than iits they have very good acceptance rate like 30% 40% but all the iits put together have an acceptance rate of 0.5% and if you are working hard to get into iit bombay iit bombay's ranking is 177 and IIT Roorkee's ranking is 400. If you are happy to get into IIT Roorkee, then getting into universities better than IIT Roorkee is easier compared to getting into IIT Roorkee. And looking at the salaries for computer science, for software jobs, if you have done your master's in computer science in US, the salaries are ranging from 80 lakhs per year to 1.2 crore per year. So even if you take an average of 1 crore per year, your savings will be much higher than the salaries in India. After taxes and your cost of living, you can easily save 40 to 50 lakhs uh, per year. And in India, the maximum jobs that you get is around 30 lakhs. So your savings will be much greater than the salaries in India. And these are all the services that we provide. University shortlisting. So depending on your profile, we will shortlist what are the universities that you have to apply. And statement of purpose building and then LOR guidance and GRE and English test assistance and education loan assistance. So you don't have to have any collateral, which, which means without any security, now you can get education loan. Getting education loan is very simple these days. And whatever the amount fee, the amount of uh, fee that you have, you have a range of uh, universities. You can apply for 10 lakh universities, 20 lakh universities or 50 lakh universities. But whatever it is, you are going to get complete education loan and you can pay off your education loan in one year after you, getting a, after you get a job. And then we do visa assistance, mock visa interviews and then connecting with the university alumni. So now you might ask why we should join game of visas. So the answer is we have 90% success rate, 99% success rate. And these are all the destinations that we guide the students to. So we guide students to any country that you want to go. So now it is not just USA. We guide to UK, Germany, Australia, Canada. So we guide we guide students to all the countries. We work with all the destinations. And if you are interested in going abroad, you have to just drop us a message on this WhatsApp number 9494554454. Okay, thank you.